Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem missing number. And this is another problem from the blind 75 list, a list of common leak code questions we've been tracking. This is missing number in the binary category. You'll see why in a moment. And the link to this sheet will be in the description. If you do want to take a look, we have solved most of the problems in this list so far. So let's continue. So the thing I like about this problem is that there's so many different solutions to this problem, even though it's an easy problem I think it's a good problem to just understand a lot of the different solutions involved with this problem you can definitely learn a lot so we're given an array of numbers containing n distinct numbers in the range 0 to n even though this range actually has n plus 1 numbers inside it we're only choosing n distinct numbers from this range and we want to return the only number that's missing from this array. So we want to find the missing number from this range that, that we did not pick. There are many different ways to solve this problem. The follow-up is, can we implement a solution with O of 1 extra space and O of n runtime complexity? That's going to be the challenge. And actually, there's two different ways we can arrive at such a solution. I'll show you both of them because they're both pretty interesting. Okay, so in the first example, we're given three distinct numbers because the length of this is three. So the range that we're looking at is from zero to three, right? There's four different numbers in this range, zero, one, two, and three, but we've only chosen three of them in our input. We wanna find the one that's missing. So we can kind of just go through this input, right? Three, okay, uh, the missing number is not three. Zero, the missing number is not zero. One, the missing number is not one. So the only remaining number is two. So two is the missing number. That was a pretty easy way to solve the problem. What exactly did we do right now? Well, you could have you could think about this list of numbers as basically a hash set or hash map or whatever you want. And we're basically iterating through the list of numbers and then crossing out the ones that are already uh, in contained in the input list. So basically we used O of N extra memory with a hash set or map and O of N time complexity because we had to iterate through the input array. So that's actually the most simple solution, right? Using hashing to do this problem, but it does take O of N extra memory. The follow-up was, can we do this in O of one extra memory? There are two different ways actually that at least I know of that you can do that. So let me show you both of those right now. So one of the ways that we can solve this problem with O of one memory is going to be needing some binary properties. And if you've never really heard of this, there's no way you can kind of figure out this solution, at least this binary solution. It's going to need the XOR operator, the exclusive OR operator. If you don't know what this is, let me show you. Let's suppose we had two numbers. Let's say we had two and we want to exclusive OR it with three. This is the symbol that you use for exclusive or. So we're taking two and exclusive oring it with three. So this is a binary operation. So we're going to look at the binary representation of two, which is going to be one zero. We're going to look at the binary representation of three, which is going to be one one. We're going to exclusive or these. How do you exclusive or? You look at each bit and if only one of them, it, basically if they're different, if both of the bits are different, one must be a zero and one must be a one. They could be swapped, right? It could be one zero or zero one, but they need to be different. And if they are different, then the output is going to be a one. If they're the same in this example, they're both one, or if they were both zero, that means they're the same. So then in the output, we're going to have a zero. So you can take two numbers like two and three exclusive or them, and we get in this case an output of one. So why is exclusive oring gonna be helpful for us in this problem? Well, my question to you is what happens when we take two numbers that are the same and then try to exclusive or them? So five together with five, so five in binary I think is one, zero, one. So if we exclusive or these together, what's gonna happen? Well, we're gonna look bit by bit. It's gonna be the same. So we're gonna get a zero in the output. Again, it's gonna be the same. We're gonna get a zero in the output, right? If they're zero, zero or one, one, they're the same. Uh, similarly, in this case, uh, it's gonna be zero, right? Because of course, when you take two numbers, they're gonna have the exact same binary representation. If you exclusive or them together, we're gonna get zero in the output because they're the exact same, right? They're always gonna be the same. 
So the exclusive or is going to give us a zero. Why is this helpful for us in solving this problem? Well, basically, the order in which we exclusive or numbers does not matter. For example, if I took five exclusive or five and then exclusive or three, what's going to be the output of this? Well, as we just determined, five exclusive or with five is going to evaluate to zero, right? So then the problem is going to be zero exclusive or with three. What happens when you take a number and then exclusive or it with zero? Well, you just get the original number. Why is that the case? Let's look. Uh, let's say we had uh, one, one, this is our three, and then zero is zero, zero, zero. And if we exclusive or this, we're just going to take all the ones in three and put them in the output, right? Because this is going to evaluate to one. This is going to be one. And then uh, zero zeros, which is going to be the rest of this thing, is also is just going to evaluate to zero. So in the output, what we get here, as you can see, is the number itself, three. So when you take three uh, exclusive or with a zero, we get the three. Uh, and the thing I'm getting at is uh, this operation, it doesn't matter the order that you do it in. If you do five exclusive or three and then exclusive or five, uh, we're still going to get a three in the output because five exclusive or with three is going to be something sure. But basically what I'm saying is the order does not matter, right? We can say, you know, five exclusive or with five first, then these kind of cancel each other out and then we're left with the three. So why is this going to be helpful? You might be able to figure it out by now uh, because I've kind of explained most of the logic here. So how are we going to use this simple fact to get the answer, get the missing number from this range that we're given, zero to three? Uh, we know one of the numbers happens to be missing. How are we going to do that? Well, we know one of these numbers is missing from this array, right? So what are we going to do? We're going to take the uh, the range 0, 1, 2, 3, exclusive or it with the input array. In this case, it's 0, 1, 3, right? We're missing the 2. What's going to happen when we do this operation, this exclusive or operation? Well, the zeros are going to match, right? Uh, the zeros are going to cancel out. The 1s are going to cancel out, right? We're going to get rid of the 1s. The 3s are going to cancel out as well. And then once everything is canceled out, the 2 will be remaining because it's the only number that didn't show up twice because this was the missing number. This 2 was the missing number. So then once the this entire our exclusive or operation is done, we'll be left with a two, which is the answer in this case. And we did it with O of one memory because we just had to really iterate through every number in this uh, input array, exclusive or them together, and then iterate through every number between zero to three, exclusive or them with the result of the exclusive or over here and then once all of those exclusive ors are done it's basically a linear time function it's going to be 2 2 n because we're iterating through this array and iterating through that so it's going to be o of 2 n the time complexity the memory complexity is going to be o of 1 because we didn't need anything extra and this solution is pretty easy to code up, but there's actually one additional solution that I think is interesting for this problem that I'm going to quickly go over. Let me explain how we're going to uh, arrive at the next O of one memory solution, and then I'm actually going to show you how to do it. The simple idea is going to be this. What if we took the sum of this range, 0 to 3, right? Basically the array from 0, 1, 2 to 3. We took the sum of this array, subtracted from it the sum of the input array, right? Right? If we did that, if we took the sum of this subtracted by the sum of the other array, we would be left with 2, right? Because 2 is the missing number. 2 is the only number that shows up here that does not show up here, and then the difference is going to be 2. That's really easy. Now, of course, taking the sum of this array would be O of n, and to compute this, it would also be O of n, so the overall time complexity is going to be 2n. And we're not. We're just going to be maintaining two sums uh, for each of these arrays, right? We're not actually going to be using any extra memory, so the overall memory complexity is going to be big O of one. So this is probably the easiest solution that you can arrive at with just O of one memory, right? This is probably the most intuitive one, so this is the one I'll be coding up. But just so you know, you can actually calculate this sum. Uh, you actually don't need a loop. You can actually do it in O of one time using Gauss's formula. But that's something you can probably read more about on your own because it's a little bit extra for this problem. So now let's get into the code. We're going to initially set our result to zero, or are we? Because what we want to do, like I said, is iterate through this input array nums, and then second, iterate through another array, basically the array from zero to the length of this array nums, right? And then just kind of add those together. 
right? We're adding the values from this array zero to n and subtracting the values from the input array. Uh, but we don't need two loops to do that because since we're adding these values, these values are going to be from 0 to uh, n, but we can use the index from this array nums to actually replace these values. It's more simple than I'm going to be able to explain, so let me actually just show you what we're going to do before I actually uh, you know, try to explain it. So we're going to go through i in range, length of the input array num. So i is just the index, right? But we're going to be using i. We're going to say a result. We're going to add to the result the i value. We're going to be adding this index, right? We're, that's what we're going to be doing and we're going to be subtracting the number from nums right nums of i we're going to add i but subtract nums of i from this result why are we doing that because remember we want to add every value from here from this uh, range it to our result but we want to subtract every value from nums obviously we're subtracting every value from nums but we want to add every value from this range so with this loop we're going to be adding every value from zero to the length minus one because i because i is only going to go through every position from zero to the length minus one uh let me actually correct this before we get an error. Uh, this is going to be length minus one, right? We want to iterate through every position of nums. So basically what I'm getting at is for this result, we actually have to initialize not the result to zero, but uh, initialize it to the length of nums because we want because with this loop we're going to be adding i uh is it from zero to length minus one we're going to be adding that to the result but we also want to add the final value length of nums which is basically our n value and that's pretty much the explanation i probably overcomplicated it in this case uh, it's a little more simple than you might think uh, but this is the easiest way to do it with one loop then we can go ahead and actually return that result Actually, I don't actually need this minus one because I just remembered that Python, the way Python works, is I will implicitly, it'll it'll stop before it actually gets to length of this. It'll basically be uh, length of the nums minus one by, by default in Python. Uh, we can go ahead and run the code and you can see that it is very efficient. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.